we're here with a very special episode. Uh, we've been had having requests to have a dagger against Gambison episode and try different forms of thrusting with different types of blades that have different profiles. They have different uh, tapers that are distal and also profile tapers. And that gives them different uh, thrusting ability or they're designed to either cut less, thrust more, uh, thrust less, cut more, so to speak. Uh, you kind of gain one, lose the other. So today what we've done is we've got blades to represent all types of blades, all types of daggers. We've got the double edge that are straight with very little profile taper. Uh, but they're, they're not too broad. And we've got ones that become extremely broad, have fullers, and are extreme distal and extreme profile taper. Then we have others that only have a partial edge, a back edge, which is called a false edge on the tip, like the Scottish Dirk. Uh, we've got stuff like a broken back sax, believe it or not. We've got a broken back. They were supposedly clipped to make them better, kind of like a Tonto or something, to thrust. They have a, a tip where it's more likely to thrust into materials like that. So even though it is more of a cutting blade, it was designed for thrusting, so we're going to try that out. Uh, we even have a, a later century style design, or even in any century they could have made one that's tapered for thrusting. We have a, uh, a pairing or like a mango style dagger. Very beautiful dagger. And then we have Isaiah Harris's combat style knife, although it's sharp and sweet, uh, and it doesn't have a taper other than being shaped a lot like a buoy or a, a hunting or combat knife. We'd like to see how that performs as well. That gives us kind of a wide variety of different lengths, which that does have a difference on the actual point control, and different shapes. So I'm expecting to see an extreme uh, uh, disparity. I mean, like some things are going to be different than others, and some should be very similar to others. So the idea is to get a comparison, see what we've got going on, and uh, see how well it works against the 36 layers of heavy cotton, tightly woven cotton is what we're going to be using. They simulate our, our linens or our cotton gamuts, in which they did use cotton gamuts historically. So 36 layers is an extreme amount, and this is some really tightly woven stuff, and we're going to have it over our uh, uh, bottle full of blood. We're doing that. We're not going to be using ballistic shelling today. We might do that in a future episode using ballistic shelling, because that will change it a little bit as well on actual penetration after the fabric. Uh, but we have... Uh, a cool variety here, and this has basically been dubbed. Uh, what do you call it, Elgrim? Uh, oh yeah, I've, I've called it. I'm calling it Dagger Geddon. Dagger Geddon. So this is Dagger Geddon. That's right. So we're gonna try them all. This is like the uh, end all battle royal of daggers uh, or blades. Uh, I want to bring up the uh, Lance Knecht, Lance Knecht, Lance Knecht, uh, Lance uh, We pronounce it as it's spelt. Uh, I mean, I guess as most Americans would, or anybody who is just going by letters and not going by dialect. Phonetic or, pronunciation. Or a specific phonetic pronunciation for a, a, a certain language or, or what have you. Uh, if it was an old horse, I'll tell you, it would be Lance Connect. I'm, I'm sorry, they didn't have a special uh, uh, Character sound Character or anything, correct. yeah. Just, just like if they said uh, knife, there was a word, an old Norse for knife, which was Kniff. Or Kniff was the dominant version of it. Uh, well, Nif was nose. So if you were to say uh, the uh, silent K, you'd end up with nose and knife being the same word, and then people would be confused. So who's to know exactly the direct dialect back then? I'm not trying to say that anybody's wrong. I'm just saying that uh, things change over the years, and we just pronounce it the way it's spelled. So we apologize if we offended anybody. It's uh, Lance Knish or Lance, Lance Knift, from what we understand. So hopefully we got that right. Uh, and then we've got a, a good variety here. I think it's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to it, so we need to get out there and get this going for it. Gets That's tonight. right. Yeah. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Three and Square Garden presents Dagger Gadden. Dagger Gadden, y'all. Featuring the Eviscerator, the Mutilator, the Eradicator, the Errorator. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but Let's get out there and get to work. If they exist, we've got them. There's an ex example from one of these fine blades. Let's do it, dude. All right, I'm here with the Sax from Medieval Shop. This is one of my favorite blades. Uh, we tested it for cutting when I first received it because we received it late. It was meant to be in a shipment and we didn't get it right away. So it was kind of a, a special surprise when we did receive it. And I mean, this has proven to be a cleaver. Uh, you've got a big old wide back uh, uh, back to it that is almost a seam to go bevel, but it's a broken back sax. They believe this was done for thrusting, historically. So this would be our least likely 
uh, broadest blade, although very rigid, to try to make it through here. And this is an extreme amount of gamison, 36 layers, really tough stuff. So I'll be surprised if it goes very deep or makes it through, but we're gonna go ahead and try that out and see what happens. I'm gonna try a really powerful thrust and come up the first time, see what happens. All right. Damn, Brand, that that got that got in there, but I, that got halted. Uh, yeah, we didn't make it through. We're we're believe it or not, it almost made it through. Almost. I mean, this is like we've got maybe two or three layers, and there's no point coming through. Uh, I don't think there's a point in pulling it off to show it, but that hurt my wrist. It stopped it so abruptly. So no, it is not through, and it is not into a bottle. All right, one of my favorites that I carry quite often was a uh, handmade combat knife by Isaiah Harris. It's beautiful. It's got a handle much like an old K-bar with stacked leather. It's made out of a file. Believe it or not, uh, Jim Bowie's original uh, blade, the Bowie knife, was made out of a large file. So this is a very big tradition, especially in the, in the United States, to make blades out of such material. And it makes a very sturdy very extremely strong blade if it's done properly where it doesn't it's not brittle so let's go ahead and try that out this is sharp stout uh, it might have a better chance of going through ah! well it twisted in my hand as I stabbed we got a nice thrust into it uh, right over our target so I didn't miss that but uh, we didn't get very much deeper and we got about the same Maybe, maybe a hair less, but about the same. I'll try it one more time. Ah! Sorry, I hollow sometimes because it does hurt too doing this. I can feel it in the whole shoulder and the arm trying to get uh, through something and getting abruptly stopped. So, no, we're not going through with this. Uh, it's a good thruster. It's made it through several phone books uh, into, in, into the third one, but it's just not a good taper or a good profile for going through gambus. Not a lot with this thrust of this. Especially that kind of gambus. That gambus is right. crazy tough. Oh, yeah. We, we went extreme. That's the whole point of this. All right. Back with one of my new favorites, the Lance Knescht uh, dagger. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, it performed very well in our other videos. It even cut through a one-inch rope. So it even has good cutting ability. I looped my finger over here, which is perfect for that, the way this specific design is. Let's go ahead and... Uh, Stab the same way we've been doing with this type of thrust, which I'm getting kind of high. So I'm not able to stab low, which this normally has more power lower, but this is realistic. I'm going for a hard or a good body blow, so good, good kill. Ah! Whoa! This one Holy actually cow. made it through. I am extremely impressed. Now, it stopped at about this point. It didn't go all the way to the back. It slowed me down. But let's see what we've got here. Because we want to check stuff out just to make sure. We want to make sure we check things properly. Uh, yeah, remember, there's no b b resistance to the bottle after it pierces the bottle. We, we know this. So I'm saying on ballistics gel or something, we might not get as deep with that much fabric. We might have gotten about half as deep as what I'm assuming. But still, that it made it through. I am extremely That's impressed. That's gruesome. Yeah, this one actually made it through. I am extremely impressed. Man, what a nice little dagger. You'd never think it either. And so man. it looks like just this much of a profile uh, taper and just that much of a uh, an actual distal taper is all it takes with a good double edge to go through. All right, we're here with the Scottish Dirk from the Needle Shop. We've tested this one many times before in the past and even on gambuses. This is more extreme than what we normally use. The difference on this blade, it is not a uh, biface blade or a spotha type design that goes all the way back. You've got a back edge to it and you've got a short edge here at the tip. So this kind of combines the same kind of ideas as Isaiah Harris's knife. You have somewhat of an edge on the back to help it thrust and maybe cut with the very tip, but it's actually not a pure dagger shape. Although it is shaped like it on length, uh, and uh, it's a very beautiful ornate blade as well. This is decorative and it's something that symbolizes Scottish pride. Let's go ahead and try it. It was used in combat, so see if we can make it through here. I have to be careful because I don't have a quillion or cross guard, but it does have such a design on the handle. And the studs, I feel fairly safe holding it back here where I can thrust. Let's see what happens. Oh! 
wow. That did it, I don't think well. it went as deep as the other, but it has made it through as well because of the shape. I am impressed. I was going to show you all exactly how far we made it through. We did make it into the bottle, but this did not go as deep as the Lanskineft or Lanskinesht blade did not. But it also might have something to do with starting to run out of edge. It is a bit fatter as well on the distal taper, so that makes a difference too, I'm sure. It is very sharp. We just sharpened it. So we got through about a couple of inches. That would be a bad one. Okay, we have the Edinburgh Castle, Edinburgh Castle uh, Scottish Dirt or Dagger. It's actually a dagger. Uh, this is based on a historical design. It's performed extremely well. Uh, and you see the taper and the distal taper and the profile taper is acute. So I'm expecting that it gets broad quickly to cause damage and a wider wound, but I'm expecting it to perform very well and go into a target. But from what we've seen, I think it's going to go in. So. Even with this type of thrust, it's weaker than, let's say, a, a roundel or a roundel grip. So let's go ahead and try it out. Oh! And as I was assuming, this one with the acute taper was much more well suited for this type of situation. And yes, we've made it through our bottle, and I would say to the back side. I'm not going to be able to show you exactly where, where we made it other than what y'all saw, but you can see how it tapers, that it's an illusion, that it looks like it's not as deep, but I made it to the actual back. That one went clean through. But of course we don't have ballistic shell, it is a bottle, so the blade design makes a major difference. Okay, I am proud to present a viewer sent uh, item that we have actually unboxed, but it uh, collects me why we haven't tested it yet. We've had this for a very long time and haven't got to actually test it out. Yeah, we got it with our bracers. Yes, most certainly. It was beautiful. We took it out of the box and, I mean, this is one of those things I guess we put to one side. But today, with the way it's designed and how thick it is, it's almost like a rondo. It's almost like a rondo, but it is a dagger. So let's go ahead and thrust this and see how it performs. And from what I've seen, I have no doubt uh, that it's going to do well. I just have a good feel. Oh, wow! Wow! That was amazing. I don't know if I hit some of the same holes or what. No, I didn't. I went below it, but it is definitely just a, a few inches. I pushed it the rest of the way a few inches from the back. It didn't make it quite to the back. It got very close to the very back. Close, I heard it. Yes. And you've got to remember this this blade here, and this is where it was at. This blade here was about here, and. It, it doesn't start off as narrow or as tapered as the other blade, so it's got a good bit of heft to it, punching ability. It's got a wide spine, but it's not very broad. It did a very good job. I'm extremely impressed. 